Hello everyone and welcome to today's Transport Topics webinar. My name is Sue Hensley and I'm the publisher of Transport Topics. I'll also be serving as your moderator for today's program. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. We look forward to providing some helpful information that you can use in your own business operations. That's the mission of Transport Topics and what we strive for in this informative webinar series. The title of today's webinar is Improve Driver Performance While Reducing the Burden on Managers. Our presenters today are Shannon Branch, Director of Compliance and HR for Petroleum Transport, and Adam Kahn, the President of Commercial Fleets for Netrodyne. We will begin our presentation in just a moment, but first a few housekeeping items. I'd like to let everyone know today that if you're experiencing any technical difficulties with either the audio or the video portions of the program, you can call the following number for assistance, 1-800-785-5623. Again, for technical assistance, that number is 1-800-785-5623. And here's a brief overview of our program. You can follow the presentation via the slide deck on screen. And while this is taking place, please feel free to submit questions for our two speakers. You can go to the Q&A box at the side of your screen. When you click on it, you can type your question in, click send, and it will be submitted. And at the end of the presentation, we will have a Q&A session and do our best to answer all of your questions. Having conversations with your drivers about their good driving or areas to improve is important, and it becomes more challenging when your team is resource constrained or your drivers are on the road. Managers can reclaim their time and stay connected to drivers by leveraging technology to communicate with, coach, recognize, and reward drivers. Netrodyne's vision-based driver eye safety solution combines video, artificial intelligence, and edge computing to help fleets improve driving performance with real-time alerts, positive driving feedback, and best practice identification. In today's webinar, we will hear from Petroleum Transport and their experience implementing the driver eye solution in their fleet. And now, let me turn the program over to today's presenters to get us started. Hi, good afternoon and uh, good, uh, good day to everybody. This is uh, Adam Kahn at Netrodyne. I appreciate the, the time to be spending with you and uh, hopefully that Shannon and I uh, can uh, present a topic that is useful and you can have some definitive takeaways that's useful for your business. Um, the, the piece that I kind of want to start with, and I, and I think that Sue just did a, a really nice job of um, recasting the, the theme of the presentation about how to reclaim your time. And, um, I think that in general, the environment is, is changing around us. Um, so I've been in this space for about 25 plus years and I've seen a number of different trends, but definitely one of the trends in the market that is starting to move the market is uh, negligent entrustment or nuclear verdicts. And, um, you know, these, these definitely cast out in the headlines quite often around how nuclear verdicts of, I think there was just a, a lawsuit that claimed about 400 plus million dollars in insurance rates. But I want to dissect this a little bit in terms of negligent entrustment and, and, and really the, the, the piece that's out there that is, uh, is that is from the topic standpoint is negligent entrustment or negligent supervision. And that's where the company is, has been determined to fail to, to fail to screen or train the driver. And the, the litigators really attach themselves to this. And the reason they attach themselves to this and what's the difference between a passenger vehicle or a commercial vehicle accident is that most of the commercial vehicles have a, a, a pretty elaborate black box installed on the vehicles. And I'm going to use a quote that I read uh, from one of the litigators was, it's a treasure trove of information about the driver and their vehicle. And what is being used against uh, a lot of fleets is this information. And so lawsuits are starting to not only include uh, compensatory, but also punitive damages. And the accumulation of this, of these lawsuits have now, um, cast a different shadow on insurance companies of looking at commercial fleets. And in the bottom right of my graphic there, I, I, I pulled a, um, a data set from Atri about the cost of insurance and 
in 2018, they were about eight cents per mile higher uh, to cover the insurance costs. So, you know, eight cents per mile all of a sudden becomes a real expense to to fleets. And so the big question is, well, what are we going to do about it? You know, how do how do you combat that, and how do you how do you adapt to the changing environment? Um, the the goals that most fleets have haven't changed, right? The first one is to eliminate accidents. So if I can eliminate accidents, I don't have to worry about uh, verdicts and settlements and being in a courtroom. Um, reducing claims um, is is the second uh, is probably the second highest goal. Both of these are, are are kind of like drinking out of a fire hose. You, you you know, unless you have a very definitive plan, they're very aspirational in in from a topic standpoint. But you have to have a plan about how do you achieve this and how do you chip away at these uh, to really have material um, improvements. And the last one I think most companies aspire to is developing a safety focused culture where the drivers are engaged and the drivers are interactive and you're actually working with your team versus against your team. So the problem statement that that a lot of fleets are thinking about is how do we effectively coach every driver in an in, in, in engaged, meaningful, timely feedback, including some positive rapport so they don't uh, quit and remove subjectivity and essentially focus on consistency without adding significant resources to the team and then uh, protecting your organization from negligent entrustment. The, the legacy model of relying on face-to-face -face coaching has some resource um, restrictions. So if I was to think about a, a, a safety manager and all they did was work with drivers, spending 30-minute session with every driver and trying now to talk to them once a week, because the new norm is no longer talking to your drivers once a quarter or once a month. It's now once a week. And once a week starts to, to diffuse the negligent entrustment uh, shadow or the profile that's being cast on fleets. For a fleet of 200 vehicles, um, you might need five safety managers to actually talk to all your drivers once a week. I, I'm not familiar with any business plan that uh, includes adding five members to the team to talk to drivers once a week. So, you know, the, the problem statement is there is how do I now communicate with drivers? How do I talk to them on an effective way? And, and the big question is, who do I coach? And I think in some cases, you know, coaching also has changed in respect to the drivers that I need to coach for performance improvement. But there's also drivers that I can now identify that are top performers that I want to continue to support and reinforce their positive driving. So when I think about when I cast my shadow around how to coach, um, there is a element of appreciation for positive recognition. And uh, if you're at all familiar with safety systems, traditionally uh, a lot of the safety programs have been built around the concept of the Heinrich Triangle, which talks about trying to remove unsafe acts out of your fleet. I would actually suggest that based on the changing environment of technology, the research around Heinrich, Heinrich Triangle is incomplete because what it doesn't account for is the moments where you can actually reinforce drivers with positive driving safe acts. And so what you really want to try to do is build into the program, not only focusing on the unsafe acts, but also now reinforcing the safe acts. So if you can conceptualize and think about the change of your safety program from moving from using the stick to the carrot, this is really one of the embracing one of the key elements of embracing technology. So with DriverEye and what Shannon and we worked with Shannon and, and her team was really how to engage the drivers on a much more frequent basis without adding significant face-to-face uh, -face resources or members of her team. So the automated coaching approach that we have with DriverEye really focuses on can I talk to the driver on a minute-to-minute -minute basis? Can I talk to the driver on an hour-to-hour -hour basis? And, and at the end of the week, can I automate the coaching uh, experience to the drivers where I can actually get drivers to complete training and now I can demonstrate the effectiveness of our coaching, um, of our coaching environment, our safety culture?
when I think about the uh, the impact of real-time notification. So I'm going to cite a very uh, clean example, and I'm going to use the statement here that small corrections eliminate bigger issues. So in the grander scheme, if I want to reduce accidents, you don't just tell drivers to to reduce and avoid accidents. What you try to do is reinforce the safety culture, the positive safety culture of removing risk from the driving environment. So this is an example I'm going to start from the top left and move to the right and then bottom left. But in the case here, I have a driver where our system identified a driver uh, was using their cell phone. So I'm not waiting for a hard braking event. I'm not waiting for a severe vehicle movement. The system actually looks at the driver. And as the driver is identified that they have uh, uh, using their cell phone, that information is sent back to the fleet within minutes. So the fleet has that information and, and that they may have a workflow that says, hey, the next time that driver comes in, we're going to sit down that driver and talk about putting down that cell phone. But you haven't fixed the problem. So what we've uh, we've installed in a lot of our fleets is the ability to have a real time notification to the driver. So at 533 and 45 seconds, the driver is identified using their cell phone at 533 and 51 seconds. We invoked a. It real-time notification talking to the driver about putting down the cell phone. Five seconds later, the driver put down the cell phone. So in the matter of 11 seconds, we identified a problem and we resolved the problem. Now, you still might have a conversation with the driver at the end of their shift, at the end of the week or the end of the month, but you've removed risk out of the, uh, out of the uh, driving experience. And so again, small corrections eliminate bigger issues. Another example that we um, worked with a, a similar fleet, and this was almost a, the perfect controlled uh, test environment. We had a fleet that had demonstrated that they had a high amount of severe stop sign alerts. This is a vehicle that travels through an intersection greater than seven or eight miles an hour, right? So this is a, a complete violation. It's a high risk maneuver. Um, you know, you don't want to see it. Now, what the fleet did, um, was turned on the real-time notification around uh, intersections, severe stop signs. That very next week, we saw almost a 50%, uh, maybe a 30 or 40% um, reduction in risk. And over time, you see there's this huge reduction of risk that happened without adding face-to-face -face resources, without adding more members of your team to address the drivers. So there are these small victories, these small corrections that are, are now more resident to, one, remove risk, but also to uh, demonstrate uh, the, the completeness of your safety uh, culture. The other piece that I think is, is, is really important is how you share information. Um, being able to provide information on an hour-to-hour -hour basis so a driver can log into the mobile app and the mobile app provides the driver their score. The score actually updates every minute. Um, and the, uh, the score itself actually reflects what key driving performance elements are affecting that driver's score. So as an example um, on here, it says your green zone score is 694. That driver might have a safety bonus that is that they can achieve if their score is 750. Now what they really want to know is what driving habits can I change to get to that 750? How do I get paid at the end of the week or at the end of the month? The system itself will provide the information to the driver that says, hey, if you reduce speeding and you improve following distance, your score will go up. And actually the score rewards drivers for good driving. So you get three or four more hours of great driving, the score goes up, and uh, the driver's you know, really satisfied and happy. We did a, a test of drivers using the mobile app and the drivers not using a mobile app. So we wanted to see the effectiveness of sharing that information. And for 2000 drivers in the test, we saw about a 50 point difference in drivers using the app versus drivers not using the app in terms of our driver score. That's about a 15 to 20% improvement in driving performance. Again, it's all you're doing is sharing information. You're providing information at a much more frequent basis so the drivers can become engaged. 
And then finally, the piece that we really uh, have thought about in terms of how do you offset the claim of negligent entrustment, the lack of training, the lack of coaching, the cadence that you talk with your drivers, we've used that same mobile app to create an individual coaching plan that gets sent to the driver at the end of the week. The driver can look through the training module, through the automated coaching, they can review the information, and at the end of the training session, they can click and say, yes, I completed the training. So two things happen there is one, you've, you've pushed out training at a much more frequent basis. Maybe it's an easier training session because you don't have to go face-to-face -face with somebody. But at the end of the day, you also have that reconciliation of, yes, I've talked to every driver once a week. Yes, I've talked to drivers on a much more frequent basis and shared information with them. So again, it's that, how do I reduce accidents? How do I get out of the negligent entrustment conversation? It's small corrections, change, and remove bigger issues. So the last slide, and if um, offline, if, if people want to have a conversation with me, please engage me. You know, there is a, a pretty finite science around uh, driver engagement, the psychological uh, aspects of, of, of adding video to the system, you know, the elements around influence, which are real-time notifications, creating awareness and accountability. All these things are can be done in an automated fashion, which I think starts to make fleets much more efficient about how they talk with their drivers, how they implement the safety culture that they want to execute on, how do they protect their fleet from, um, I'll call it escalating claims uh, in terms of uh, litigation. Uh, and I think it's super important um, to write, to try to flow and try to move with the changing environment of technology and how those tools might be able to offset some of the things that fleets are, are uh, facing right now. I'm going to turn this over to Shannon uh, because as, as, as great as I am as the presenter, it's always nice to hear from fleets who have actually used the material and um, um, had great success. So Shannon, I'm going to, uh, I'm passing the baton over to you and uh, thank you everyone for the moments to, uh, to listen to me. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Can everyone hear me? Adam? Yes. Um, I, yep. No, you're, you're good. Uh, it's all yours. Okay, great. Okay. Can everyone see my head, my my main slide? The PTC slide? Yeah, you're all good. You're all good, Shannon. Okay, great. Um, so I wanted to start um, talking a little bit about the Driver Eye app and how I think that's key to engagement. Um, I wanted to kind of talk a little about, about some things that we did with our fleet, um, how we uh, have gradually implemented this with our drivers, and kind of the plan we've got going forward. Um, one thing we really enjoyed about the Driver Eye app is it puts it in front of the driver all the time, and it really creates some type of competition for the driver to compete with himself to get a better score. It gives him the top two areas he needs to focus on right on the app so he can see if speed and following distance are the two things he needs to work on to improve his score. He sees really simply right in front of him uh, right on the app that he can improve those. Um, we really like that. We like the simplicity of it. Um, it's a very nice looking app that's easy to see. And it's also an easy method to help um, coach drivers remotely like Adam mentioned earlier. Um, it's really good to use some type of campaign or kickoff when you first start with Netrodyne or any type of um, um, dash cam product. Uh, we really encourage drivers in the beginning to install the app, um, to get going. Uh, we keep a tablet. Um, for those straggling flip phone users out there, we do keep a tablet in our terminals because our drivers are home every day. 
um, they work a 12 hour shift and they're, they're back at the terminal at the end of their shift each day. So they can check in with their terminal managers and if they have a flip phone, they can use a tablet there in the terminal for them to go on the driver I app, take a look at how they did for the day and those kind of things. Um, managers can also print paper scorecards to hand out to drivers on a regular basis in a nice glossy format. So it's really easy to give that information that he sees on the driver I app on paper um, for review with the driver. And, um, you can also choose to add the Netrodon app to a, your ELD tablet if you're if you're able to do that. I know a lot of fleets use tablets or use phones for their trucks for their e-logs, and uh, you can just add this app right onto the to the tablet. Depending on how much data you have, you can put this on there and use that and kind of get it going with that as well. We chose to combine um, our driver eye rollout and really getting drivers engaged and really kicking it up a notch after we did all of our installs and got guys going. We combined our um, installation of the driver eye apps with a safety campaign. And since the road check was delayed this year, we used Operation Safe Driver to incorporate a, a contest to get drivers to install the driver eye app, begin using it in order to um, promote Safe Driver Week. and earn cash awards, and we uh, rewarded our high scores. Uh, we gave uh, good old-fashioned cash awards, which drivers like, but there are also a, all kinds of other things that you can do to promote um, safe driving. Um, lots of fleets have all kinds of swag, patches, hats. You don't have to cater this to whatever your drivers like, uh, whatever promotes them, whatever they enjoy. Um, it may be different for different regions that you have, but uh, here's some ideas. Everything from PTO time, golf shirts, and those kinds of things are good ideas to get guys engaged and reward those folks that make improvement. Um, reward all improvement, not just top scores. Um, as you go through your data, when you begin with Netrodyne, you'll see a bell curve, and you'll see some guys that they're going to have a score of over a thousand. Um, generally, Netrodyne goes from one to a thousand in their green score, and you get those stars or those green stars that are extra credit for drivers for having defensive driving movement. So we have a lot of drivers who continually score over a thousand every day. But then you're going to have that bottom 10 or 20 percent of those that struggle, and you really want to get those guys encouraged to get up to that midline of about 850, which is kind of where Netrodyne is, is kind of told us that that's a good place for drivers to be. So we're working on that bottom group, and you really want to recognize those drivers who have a peak in scoring if they have a continual weak score. Um, if they have, a, like, they're most improved overall in a contest. Um, or if you've got a particular category, like for say, for example, if you have speeding is an issue in one of your locations or speed is an issue with your fleet, you can target rewards for that particular alert category. And always recognize guys that have those driver stars, the guys that get those extra credit, because that's really important for drivers to take defensive movements uh, during the course of their day, and they get extra credit for that. So if their score may be a little lower, they can use those driver scores to get that score back up. And that's a real incentive to um, to get that score up, even if they may have an issue one particular day or another. Um, one thing that we found really valuable with Netrodyne's um, um, reports is the group report. There's a group report in there where you can take all of your regions, like we have different terminals, and we'll take all of our terminals, we have about eight or nine of them, we'll put, we'll separate all of our um, drivers within those groups, and then we'll run, run reports each week of all of our groups and how they compare to one another. Um, this report gives you how many coaching sessions your coaches did at that location, the average green score of all your drivers, and the total amount of events that have occurred in that group for that time period you can run. You can run it for a day, for a week, for a month. And we run it weekly so we can take a look at what the trends are with those guys, put it in front of our coaches and our terminal managers in those locations and say, okay, this is what your drivers are doing and where can we concentrate on for the upcoming week. And it's really great. Um, it really shows your stronger week areas and your locations. It not only does it encourage the driver, uh, 
driving competition among those drivers, but also among your coaches and your managers, because they want to be the ones on top with the highest green score. So if they see that, you know, they will concentrate and really work on getting their coaching up, doing more coaching next week, being sure they get to every driver. And we'll talk about that a little bit on the next couple of slides. Okay. Here's another report that we use. Um, it's um, a report where you download the information by driver um, in a CSV. And I took this a snapshot of this and kind of changed it up a little bit. But this is an example of some scores for our drivers. And you can take this report and do it by terminal, and you can uh, post it in your terminals and let all of your drivers be scored uh, and ranked by their green score. And you can do it down to the event level where you could show every event and what driver has had certain events. If one driver has a speeding issue, his speeding issues will show. So if you post this with your drivers and you do it by green score or you do it by every down to every single event level, that really gets competition going with those drivers. Not only do you have competition with your managers and coaches, but you do with your drivers as well. And that pride factor really factors in with drivers and at least with our fleet. So I think that's really important. And every driver wants to improve and wants to be at the top. And that's really good to really good tool to get that going. Stay up to date on your coaching. Um, this for that weekly report comes in that's so valuable. Face to face coaching works great for us because we are um, a local fleet. Our drivers are home every day. Um, they report um, to their off office location and talk to their drivers regularly. Talk managers talk to their drivers regularly. However, it's great to have remote coaching because we do have satellite locations where those drivers may not see a manager every day. And we can use remote coaching to reach out to those guys if they have an event that week or that day. We can go out to them and say, hey, I'm going to send this. The manager is going to send this event to you. Take a look at it. He can send them a message or a text have a phone conversation with them about it without having to be present in front of that driver. And that's really great. Uh, we've started using this and we will continue to use it more as we move forward uh, with Netrodyne. And of course, that automatic, automatic coaching is also available. And we have not put this in place yet. However, I'm very excited to see how this will work in our fleet once we get going with the other coaching. Um, the one thing I really like about it, you may see one driver who has more than one event of a type during the course of the shift. He may have um, three distracted drivings or a couple of speeds and during a couple parts of the shift. And if you can catch that first one and you can get the automated app to coach him, you may take away the opportunity or give him the incentive to not have those other two later in the day. And we see that a little bit now with some of our events, but I think this, this would be really valuable to a fleet that had a lot of those. Um, it gives the driver the opportunity to review it right away, be coached right away. Again, you've got, you've got the tracking available to see his improvement after he's had these, and this is something we're looking forward to, to use in the future. Um, but I hope um, some of these things help you with tips for your fleet, and I really appreciate you guys listening to me today. Uh, oh, one more thing. I've got one more slide here. We also have created a driver bonus program. Um, we've had a driver bonus program in place for some time, and here's an example of a scorecard, something kind of a mock-up of what you might use. Um, there are lots of ways to do it. You can use a green score and just award drivers for green score if you want to focus on driving, or if you have other things. We currently have a speed program with um, our ELD that we use that we had already set up and had in place, so we've stuck with that for now. Uh, but there are lots of things that drivers do in the course of their day, depending on your fleet. You may have um, you know, paperwork a driver may do. You may have things like observations you do on your drivers. You may have other online training you have them do regularly. There are lots of things you can incorporate in a bonus program. But here's just some ideas of some things you can do and incorporate um, uh, Netrodyne right into what you're already doing. And that's it. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Shannon. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. A big thank you to our, our speakers, Shannon Branch from Petroleum Transport and Adam from Netrodyne. And again, if you'd like to submit a question today, 
please go to that Q&A box on your screen, which should allow you to type a question for us. And already some questions have been coming in, so why don't we go ahead and uh, get to the first. Um, Adam, you mentioned removing subjectivity while coaching. Can you expand on how you do that? Yeah, I, I think I'll start, and then maybe, uh, Shannon, if you want to add some color commentary, uh, please do. Um, so, so one of the pieces that is important is having the same scoring metric for every driver. Um, and um, we found that um, – one of, the, one of the dynamic elements of our green zone score is we actually normalize the activity against the driver's day. And um, a green zone score for a driver that has uh, five hours of driving might be vastly different than a, a, a green zone score of a driver who has two hours of driving for the day. And so what we've done with the green zone score is we actually look at both the numerator, the top line, the number of alerts, but also the denominator, which is the uh, all the uh, good driving uh, aspects. And so when you start to normalize that data, you can have a driver score. If driver A with five hours of driving has 800 as their score and driver B has 800 as their score, you've actually looked at the body of work in the same way where you create a kind of an equal uh, standpoint to when you sit down and coach with both drivers. Um, I think the fault in most systems is if you look at a driver and say, driver A who had five hours of driving and you had 50 alerts, and driver B who had two hours of driving only had 20 alerts, the the error might be that you look at driver B and say, well, driver B is a, a much better driver than driver A. Um, and so the 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 goal of trying to create a sub, you know, reducing sub, subjectivity is to kind of normalize the data and try to uh, measure everyone on the same on the same caliber. Great. Um, next question: uh, How accurate is the distracted driving slash phone identification? Yeah, I, I uh, that's a great question. Um, and I was on a, a call earlier today with a prospect, and we talked about the philosophy of alerts. Um, so one of the things that we look at is an element called precision. And precision is synonymous with accuracy. Um, and so what we really do is we, we hold the internal alerts of any communication to the driver at a much, much higher standard than um, as compared to maybe something like stop signs. Now stop sign, we have a very high precision um, but anytime you talk to the driver, you almost have a covenant with the driver, a trust factor that says, if I'm going to provide some information to you, my responsibility as a solution provider and Shannon's responsibility as a fleet as fleet leadership is to say, this is going to be as accurate as possible. So when we track those, um, we really we really look at digitizing the body looking at the elements and we continuously machine learn on object detection. So uh, one of the benefits of driver eye that not only do we hold it to a very high standard coming out of the chute, but we continually apply machine learning to edge cases to, you know, what if um, someone has a beard or someone has a CB radio or someone's chewing gum or somebody has, a, you know, twirling a pencil in their hand. All those continuously get reviewed by our analytics engine and improve the accuracy. Um, but it's uh, I call it it's a living and breathing thing that comes out of the chute with a very high standard. Um, one thing we've done is if we have a false positive, like say for example a driver is holding his hand up to his chin and it's kind of a you know kind of a square shape and. Detrodine thinks that may be a, a camera. You have the ability to reject that alert, and that way that false positive doesn't affect the driver's score. And you can reject it and put a little comment at the bottom, and that goes back to Netrodyne for future improvement. So um, we use that if we do have a false positive, and we can be sure that everyone's on equal playing field for those. Right, and so, Shannon, and so so that's a great that's the feedback loop, is that then we take that information and we refine our algorithms, and we build in those edge cases and those cases where 
it, it, it was, it, you know, it was a, uh, you know, an index card or something else that, that we picked up. Um, and, and so that's the continuing improvement of the system, you know, as we partner with our fleet customers. Great. Thank you both. Um, Adam, you showed a chart for stop sign compliance improvement. Have you seen similar results in reducing distracted driving? Yeah, so the other the other two charts and I our marketing team had provided them to us and in the interest of not, you know, um having every stat deck out there. Um well, there's plenty of great case examples. Um we have an example with one of our fleet customers and really what you want to look at is those unique experiences where a fleet has rolled something out and then turned on one feature and really to uh, apply the statistical modeling against the impact of that feature. So we have cases, uh, I have a really good case study where a fleet's following distance uh, was reduced uh, by 68%, uh, which effectively brought their following distance, average following distance to from under two seconds to over three seconds of average following distance. We've seen another fleet with distracted driving uh, where you see 30 or 40 percent uh, reductions, and and what you what you'll see is two aspects of that improvement line. One is creating awareness, where the driver uh, you know was told not to use their cell phone, and then uh, used their cell phone, and the system uh, invoked a, a you know a notification and a change was made, and then the reinforcement would be uh, to Shannon's point of how you incorporate that into the conversation from a longer term perspective of reinforcing the policy. So um, yeah, every in cab notification we have, it's it's really incredible the where you see double digit improvement or double digit reduction of that risk factor. And it's only by creating awareness um, to the driver. And it's in its coaching in a in a very I call it a no shame environment, right? So you're not, you don't have to look someone in the eye and say, yeah, I was using my cell phone. Sorry. You know, it's a very uh, passive uh, coaching that happens. And I think the drivers, you know, who are very occupied with their job and they're very focused and they want to do a good job, um, appreciate the, you know, the, the slight nudge versus the heart, you know, the hard hand um, that talks about, you know, some of these factors. Great, thank you. Uh, here's another question. How in depth are the weekly training sessions? Yeah, I might I might ask Shannon to talk about that. Well, they can be as in depth as you want them, and you can cater it to you know, your fleet. Um, we may have a driver with you know a couple, three different types of alerts. He may have a speeding, and he may have something else. That particular training session may take longer, but the events are only a few seconds long. So generally, when, as soon as they see the event, they see what's occurred, and they they immediately know what's happened. And usually, the conversation, you know, is you know, let's improve. You can do better. Um, you know, if you improve in these two areas, I can see that you have a few more following distance issues. If you will back off and stop and go traffic, if someone cuts you off, or you take this particular defensive maneuver versus another. Um, you can see that they'll get some buy-in and they'll they'll understand it. But usually the video speaks a thousand words, and once you kind of explain that, give some alternatives, encourage them in the categories that they may be weak, and show them the score that they could have if they didn't have that right on the Netrodyne app, they can and encourage the net, use of the, the use of the Netrodyne app. And um, that driver app will really help them get that score back up. Yeah, so I might, I might want to add, and I'm going to, I'm going to add this next question that's on the, in the queue here. And I, I know, Shannon, you brought it up. Um, you know, the question is, what actions qualify as a driver star? And I, I want to add to Shannon's point about uh, the training sessions or the coaching sessions. So a driver star looks at, um, there, there's really three types of driver stars we have today. Um, a driver who's uh, maintaining their lane in a safe environment, somebody cuts them off. And the driver creates space, um, and, and so that's that's really you know that's really invoking a lot of the training that the drivers get about always having a safety cushion. The uh, the second uh, driver star that is where the the driver again is on the right side, you know, trying to be on the right side of the highway, um, and then they have to negotiate a car or a truck or a vehicle that's entering the highway, 
in a lot of cases, there's um, opportunity for conflict of where uh, the word merge is misunderstood by one of the drivers. And in this case, the driver, your driver, um, chooses to create space and, uh, and give up the lane. And then the third driver star that we have is, um, and I, I'm learning more and more about this every every uh, conversation I have about it, but it's the move over law, that if you have uh, vehicles or emergency uh, vehicles that are on the shoulder of the road, and if you have the opportunity to essentially move over a lane, so if you're traveling in the right-hand lane and you can move over safely one lane over, uh, we do give some credit back to the driver in terms of a, a bonus to their score. The the driver stars, I think, create an opportunity for an engaged conversation during the training session. So if, if Shannon, you have a driver that, you know, you really need to talk to because they just, they're an aggressive speeder, you know, they, they violate the speed limit very aggressively. But from time to time, they do have some driver stars. Um, you know, it's an interesting concept to bring in the positive and acknowledge the good driving and then work together to improve um, a, a very selected performance, uh, driving performance uh, criteria. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of research around acknowledging and appreciation in terms of trying to in, in, impact change. And in the driver star uh, really affords that opportunity where you can start the conversation saying, I know you know how to be a great driver. Let's talk about, you know, the things that we may want to work together on. Great. Thanks so much, Adam. Um, here's another question. Uh, have, how have drivers reacted to the automated coaching? Are some of them resistant? Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's – um, so one of the pushbacks I've gotten from a lot of fleets um, is you've just given me a lot of information I have to shift through, and I have to um, – now, now having all the data makes it really nervous for me because now I have to understand all the data. One of the one of the promises of DriverEye that we've worked with our customers on is is how do you? I'd rather have all the data and not have to guess, right? So if I'm only waiting for a hard braking event to turn on my camera to now explore what my driver is doing, that's a fraction of the day. I'd much rather have the entire data set of the entire day pick and choose where you want to focus your fleet operations. Um, the automated coaching starts to accelerate that conversation. So if I have this big data set, I can distill it very quickly to I have a driver who is using their cell phone. Let's, let's work on that driver right now. Or I have a driver at the end of the week that we need to talk to uh, about speeding, but they're not coming into the office. And so Shannon can't talk to them face to face. How do I talk to that driver right now, you know, on that weekly basis? So a lot of the um, the evolution of this category, of this category of video safety, is how you take more information and distill it very quickly to um, to useful information for the fleet, right? that they can use and say, okay, I, I now have knowledge here. I'm going to apply it very quickly. Great. Thank you. Uh, here's a question. How does collecting more data make things easier for managers? Isn't it just more to th sort through? Yeah, and I, and I, I kind of saw that on there, uh, and I was thinking about that in terms of my last answer. It, 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 it might be. So having all the data removes guesswork. Right. So in the in the old premise that said in the absence of an alert equals safe driving, I would actually tell you that's incomplete. Actually, knowing that your driver's a safe driver is is what you want to achieve and not have to guess that just because they didn't generate an alert, they were safe. I'd much rather know and be able to work with our customers to say you have a safe driver because the 500 minutes that they drove today. We saw all 500 minutes and 92% of the day, they're doing exactly what they, you asked them to do, right? So it's not a matter of shifting to the data. It's working with the tool to say, what, what tools give you meaningful information to create workflow around? And how, does, how do you incorporate or how do you align that with your 
safety culture. So if your safety culture is zero tolerance around speeding, having information around your drivers for speeding is vastly important. Um, so I think it's a, it's, I, I would, I would recommend to people who are looking at the category to not be afraid of data. It's to now really step into it and say, how, how is the system utilizing the data to accomplish the goals that I want to accomplish? All right, thank you. Um, here's a question. Does the green zone score weight, weight everything the same, or is that configurable by, um, by customer or fleet? Um, so the green zone score, it, it, it doesn't necessarily, um, it, it has some variability, variability to the driver's actual operation. Um, so it does look at different components. So, um, and I'm going to use stop signs as an example. Uh, if I have driver A who um, uh, goes through 10 intersections and uh, does a full stop at nine and has a problem with one of them, you know, you can say, well, you have a 90% compliance rate and you have that one alert might be a severe or a moderate alert. You have driver B who might go through 100 stop signs and um, has a different ratio for driver uh, compliance. What the system does that actually, uh, in terms of calculation, looks at that individual drivers, the numerator, so the number of alerts versus the total of events uh, for that category. Uh, so it does have some customization around each driver's driving performance, and that's really how when we talk about a comparative number against one driver to the other, it starts to normalize the score and allow you to compare one driver's activity with a 750 green zone score against another driver's activity with 750 and say, okay, are these drivers equal in terms of performance regardless of their driving activity or their length of, uh, length of uh, trip? Um, there is some configurability, so there are factors of alerts that we have where the where the fleets can change the severity bands of of certain alerts, which uh, apparently you know will have a different aspect of uh, the green zone score. And then uh, we do allow the option where uh, certain fleets can uh, toggle off certain alerts. So, uh, in, as an example, uh, if you are a uh, uh, a limousine uh, carrier you know, a class one vehicle, uh, maybe a U-turn is uh, not as detrimental to your fleet as a class eight carrier that uh, where a U-turn could, you know, cause a catastrophic accident or, you know, have a vehicle that um, uh, becomes immobilized. So there is some flexibility in terms of what factors are interesting to the fleet and some variability to um, the severity bands that fleets can um, assign to each alert, which then has a corresponding effect to the green zone score. All right, thanks, Adam. Uh, another question, what ELD systems does driver I work with? Uh, so we so we use uh, the integration with ELD systems in terms of driver login, um, and we have about 30 different ELD uh, providers that we have integration to. So um, if uh, whoever asked that question uh, wants to uh, send me an email offline, I most certainly can um, share that list of, of uh, ELD providers that we work with. Perfect. We'll make sure to, to get you in touch. Um, and I've got one final question, this one for Shannon. Have drivers like gamifying their scores to earn cash bonuses or prizes, and do you think it's necessary to attach prizes to the scores, or is the pride aspect enough? Um, I think drivers really enjoy doing the campaigns and you know, participating and competing against their fellow drivers. I think there is a sense of competition, and I think drivers enjoy that. Um, however, I do not think that you necessarily need it. I think that pride factor is a lot heavier than you think it may be. So we may run a couple of campaigns a year and usually do it in combination with something like Safe Driving Week or something like that, maybe Safe Break Week. 
um, and to promote both of those and kind of get more bang for our buck as far as uh, safety is concerned with those campaigns. But the pride goes a long way, especially when you post those scores and let the drivers look at them and, you know, kind of like, you know, you don't want to get a D on your report card when your fellow next to you gets an A. They they don't like that. So it's that works a lot as well. Yeah, I can, I can imagine. Uh, well, Shannon, I want to thank you and Adam for a great presentation today and all that valuable firsthand experience and for answering so many questions from our audience today. Um, we are at the end of our program. I'd like to thank all of you who attended today's webinar. And if you have additional questions or you'd like to get more information, uh, we are going to put a contact uh, point up on the screen to get in touch. Um, and if you know of someone who wanted to attend today's program but was unable to do so, or if you'd like to go back and review any or all of today's program, we will have that available on our webinar archive page at www.ttnews.com. Thanks again for attending and have a great day.